Okay, let's talk. Um, let's talk. I just took two, well, no, I took 1.8 grams of uh, magic mushrooms, shrooms, uh, whatever you'd like to call them, psilocybin is the substance, and I, I don't have the setup to, um, to be able to record myself, but, um, I'm not naked. Uh, I threw on some slacks because, uh, just to get myself comfortable because I'm going to be sitting here for a hot minute. Um, wow. I just had and an intense does not begin to describe it. Intense does not begin to describe it. I was just in the fetal position, sobbing, bawling, my eyes out. Not even 10 minutes ago. After being confronted with a memory that I realized maybe about a week ago that I realized had happened. It, it, I don't even know. I don't even remember why, how it came into my mind, but it did. Something triggered it somehow and it just appeared. Anyway, let me, let me go backwards. I have bisexual tendencies. I, no, let me, let me go back before then, because it's probably relevant. It's probably relevant. Um, I have always been very, 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 very sexual. Very sexual. I started masturbating when I was in middle school, I want to say, maybe even before then. Maybe even, yeah, I want to say before then. Um, I've always been very sexual. But then again, th then again, I, you know, aren't most boys hypersexual? I don't know. I can only talk about my own experience. Um, okay, let's, oh, wow. Okay, um, how do I say this? How do I go, how do I? How do I say this? I don't even know how to say this. I mean, I just, I should just say it. Oh, man, I just had to, but well, the, the, what's crazy about this is that a part of me feels like, I, well, no, that's not the case because I didn't, I could have recorded myself earlier when I was confronting this when I was talking to myself about what happened to me, I didn't, I didn't record myself earlier because I didn't want to taint the intimacy of the moment, the unbridled passion that was happening, that was flowing out of me. Um, okay, so I guess I should just say it. Okay, let's just say it. No, but we can't say it that way because it didn't happen that way. The last, I guess the reason. Okay, let's just say it. Let's just say it. Let's not beat around the bush. I have bisexual tendencies. I have bisexual tendencies, which in and of itself isn't that crazy, I suppose. Um... I just, wow, I'm just still thinking about the intensity of what just recently happened. <sighs> okay. Um, okay, let's just say it. I uh, know, no, I know, because I can't just say it that I can't say it the way that I want to say it because it's not true. It's not true. 
What I want, to, what my mind is telling me that I want to say is that I was molested as a child, but that's not true. It's not true. I wasn't molested. I wasn't, not by definition. Okay, let me just. My, 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 I my, want. My, a part of me wants to say, uh, a part of me wants to say mother because my sister, um, I have a sister, dear sister, younger sister, uh, one year younger than me. I love her to death. I love her to death. She says mother, mother, mother. <laughs> I say mom. I've always said mom my whole life, but she says mother, <laughs> mother, mother. Uh, anyway. Um, my, my mother, I'll say it like my sister says it. My mother was a traveling uh, nurse. She was a traveling nurse when I was a boy. I grew up, uh, in a single mother household. It was my, for a predominant part of my life, it was my mother, myself, and my sister. And that was it. And, um. My mom did what she could to keep make sure that food was on the table. And I remember so vividly, so vividly, I remember times when we did not have f- <sighs> I remember times when we did not have a lot to eat. I just, <laughs> God, <laughs> my mom did the best she could. <sighs> I remember vivid. I remember as clear. <sighs> I could just see it. Remember as clear as as clear as, as the sun would be in the sky. We would barely have any food to eat. And um I remember the look on my mom's face. It's funny. You don't think about these things, or at least your mind blocks these things these things out it's amazing how many things it's amazing how many things are are kept are locked away from you that's one one thing that is amazing about mushrooms these magic mushrooms not even the mushrooms itself but psilocybin as a compound what it does i found and i know I'm, I'm, i'm 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 diverting from the story. <laughs> oh man, I'm so bad at that. I'm so bad at staying focused. What, I, I just find what it does, it's so great at unlocking. It's so great at un- unlocking things. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just amazing the kinds of things that your mind keeps hidden away from you because it's trying to protect you. It doesn't want you to feel or to have to be confronted with the immense pain, the immense, the immense agony that comes from, uh, memories that, that can, that can, that can reside within memories, within the intense emotional spectrum that lives in memories. Um, yeah, sometimes I, I remember a very, I remember the look on my mother's face. I'm going to say mother, like my sister did. I'm just going to do that. I love my sister. I love my sister. Um, But I, I remember the look on my mom's face. She would sometimes, my mom, she was a traveling nurse and... I remember sometimes she would buy food and she, you know, she would share it with myself and my sister. 
And there was one memory in particular I'll never forget. We went to Subway. We went to Subway. And my mother, she bought a Subway sandwich. I don't remember what it was, but I remember that it was packed full of vegetables. I remember that. I remember it was packed full of vegetables. And I hated vegetables. <laughs> when I was a kid, I loved them now. But I hated vegetables when I was a child. I hated them. But she always told me, eat your vegetables, they're good for you. And of course, with enough reinforcement, I did. And I obviously, I'm thankful for my mother. I'm thankful for that. Because now as an adult, I, I love vegetables. I love vegetables. I love them. I, I never... Anyway, I'm, 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 I'm digressing. We went to Subway. She bought a Subway sandwich and we went to a park. And my mom, she, my mother, <laughs> she turned off the car and she started to share the sandwich between my, herself, uh, my sister and I. And she would take a bite and then she would invite my sister or myself, we were in the back seat. So my sister and I were in the back seat, and of course my mother's in the driver's seat. But what she would do is she would invite my sister and I uh, to lean into the driver's area, right? She would, she, she, I remember, Jesus. She told us to stay back. I remember, it. oh, Jesus. She told us to stay back, and she told us to only come forward when when she called us. And um, when she called us, we would take one bite. <laughs> we would take one bite, and then we'd go back, and then we'd go back. <laughs> and then we'd go back into the, the back seat, and we'd enjoy. The, the bite that I remember was I remember once she called me forward and what and she held out the sandwich for me to eat to take a bite from and I looked from the sandwich to her face <laughs> oh, God. She was in so much pain. I could just see how it was like, I don't know if it was, if it was pure shame or, or she was, she had to be so strong. She had to be so strong for my sister and I, and she was holding back tears, but a, the, her face was so contorted. And I, and it seems like such a, it seems like such a, something that wouldn't really have so much weight. Like if you think about it, it's just a bite from a stupid sandwich. But it, it but it wasn't. It was my mother sharing her pain. Or no, it wasn't even that. It was my mother trying to shield my sister and I from her pain. That's what it was. She was trying to protect my sister and I, even in that moment when she wanted to break down. She only, she beckoned us. She told us, I, I so, I remember it clearly. We only came, she told us, you only come forward when I call you. Even then, she didn't want my sister and I to see her face. She didn't want us, she didn't, she didn't want us to see her like that. <clears throat> so, uh, 
my mom did the best she could. She did the best she could. And, um, I, I have not grown up into the kind of man that would make her proud. I haven't. I haven't grown up into someone that she would be proud of. And I'm sorry for that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mom. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. Oh, God. It's funny that I would, I would even use the word God. <laughs> oh, gosh. Should I say gosh instead of God? Should I say gosh? Anyway. My mom did the best she could. And, um, and I, I, I'll always love her for that. But that period, um, excuse me. That period. And I didn't really want to make this video. I didn't, well, it's not a video because I, I, I don't have to set up to record what I look like. And I'm kind of thankful for that. I'm thankful that you, you're not actually seeing me. But um, this is important because not just for me, but for even one other man who might have a situation that might, that's similar to my own. This is important. This is important. Okay. Okay. That period uh, of life, that period of life, I was in elementary school. Just so that you understand um, what I might have looked like at that time, I was in elementary school. And I don't know how old, off the top of my head, you have to be when you're in elementary school, but, uh, who, Mr., I'm just going to say his name because I actually respect him so much, Mr. Alvarez. Kindergarten, kinder, kindergarten. That was the uh, the grade it had to be. He, ha I think he was my first grade or or kindergarten. I don't know what's before first grade. He might have been my first grade teacher. I can't remember, but I feel like it was before then because we would uh, what would we would go into another? It was um. No, I don't want to say too much. No, it's fine. I I can say it. I can say it. It was in we were living. We were in um, Bullhead City, Arizona. Bullhead City, Arizona. And even though this happened at, at, at in Bullhead City, um, I still have very fond memories of of that city. Very fond memories of that city. I love the desert. I still do. I love the desert. And um. I made uh, a few good friends. Actually, only, well, really, three. No, <laughs> it wasn't even three. It was really one and two. One and two. I made one good friend. One good friend. When I was in Bullhead City, Arizona. But that happens, you know? When you're, when you move from, and that's the thing about being a child who moves from, from place to place. Um, who moves from one city to the next. You don't make friends. You don't really make friends. 
You don't, you don't, you don't. You make acquaintances, you make people. It, uh, you can't, I'm not saying that you can't make memories. You, it, it's possible to make meaningful memories in people that are your own age. Um, but you don't really make friends. At least not in the way that I define a friend. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. At that, that, at that point in time, um, Bullhead City, Arizona, my sister and I had made friends. My mom was renting an apartment, renting an apartment that was on the out, I, on the outskirts of the city, I would say so. The outskirts of the city. And the the desert, if you walked out of our apartment and you made a left, you could just walk in that direction um, out into the desert and get lost. And we almost did. It's funny. My, my mom, uh, when I was older, she told me that uh, we almost, my sister... We almost died out there. My mom had taken us out into the desert. She she doesn't really remember why she did it, but she did it just as the sun was setting. And um, just as it was beginning to set. Um, and we did that. My The thing about my mom is she was an adventurer. My mom was an adventurer. I think that's one of the things that uh, attracted her the traveling nurse lifestyle. She didn't mind the, my mom was never afraid of risk of danger of, um, at least not in her heart. She loved adventure, loved it, loved travel. And you know, it's funny because you would think that most people, you would think that, 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 that would be in most people, that most people, that adventure spirit, that traveler spirit, that willingness to, explore new places and, 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 and scale different climbs and meet new people and, and learn different languages. And you'd think that'd be in everybody, but it's not, it's not. Some people are just very, very fine, uh, with staying in one place and never interacting with, you know, they're, they're comfortable with, some people, I, you, you could, even if you would argue that they're in a minority, I, I personally would argue that, that those people are in a minority because I think that it's, I think it's beneficial for most people, most human beings, um, to go out into the world and see new people, hear new languages, experience different cultures and, and, and experience the challenges that come with that and the level of the different levels of growth that, that comes from being presented to things that aren't familiar. Um, I think that benefits most people, if not all people, but, um, anyway, um, anyway, um, I'm not going to see I'm digressing again. It's, I don't even know where that comes from. I just it's so easy for me to lose focus of what I'm trying to say. Um yeah, we almost died one time in the desert. No big deal. <laughs> My mom found her way back. I'm alive. Um we made my my sister and I We made friends with uh, a sister, uh, another brother, sister, another pair, another brother, sister pair. We made friends with them. And I do remember the girl's name. I do remember the girl's name. Her name was Amber. If, well, I don't even know if that was, I don't even know if that's true. I don't even know if that's true. It, it started with an A. I do remember that. I don't remember her brother's name though. Her brother was my age, maybe even younger. No, he had, no, he was my age. We were the same age, or at least we were cl close in age. Um, because 
What I do remember is that his sister was older than all of us. His sister, and she was taller too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, she was. She was older and she was taller. And I, I, even though she didn't, we were our own little pack of four. It was me and him and my sister and her. And, but she still, was she? No, I don't want to say she was the leader of our little pack, but. Mm, but she was definitely the, the biggest. I would, she was the biggest. Anyway, I don't even know why that's so relevant, why I'm fixated on that. But anyway, we had made friends with them. And for whatever reason, I remember going back to, oh, I'm just going to call her Amber. I remember going back to Amber's brothers, Amber's, uh, what, what, do I, what, what will I call him? Because I really, I don't even remember his name. I don't remember his name. I'll call him, I'll call him X. I remember going back to X's, uh, their apartment. I remember going back to, to their apartment. And it was during the day. It was during the day. Which means that it must have had to be a, um, a weekend. It had to have been a weekend because otherwise I would have been in school. Uh, but it was during the day. And I remember that it was dark. It was dark in the apartment. And which is strange because the way that the apartments are, are, are done. Well, I, well, some apartments are, are different because the apartment that my, my mother, I, and my sister, the one that we had was, it was different than the, what they had. Um, or maybe it's just my mind is just warping the, the, it's, it's, I, I don't know. What I remember is that it was dark, even though it was during the day, because there was only one wind, there was, um, a window that that there was a window into the living room that you could use to see into the living room and it was open the blinds were up the blinds were up the the blinds were up and so the sunlight was coming through but i i for whatever reason my mind is what i'm see what my mind is feeding to me is that the cuz the television was on you know what it is because the only thing, the only details that were important were the details that were the most meaningful, that impacted me the most. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to, to, to piece together my, you know, minutia, small details, but it's hard because I, I have to fish for that information. Whereas the information that, that impacted my psychology the most, I don't have to fish for that. Because the gist of it is, for whatever reason, I had gotten uh, naked with X. And we, for whatever reason, we began rubbing our penises together. And I, I remember... Because see, the thing is, the reason why this minutia is a bit important is because his father uh, was home, and he was seated. Uh, he was he was in the living room, and he was on the couch. Um, and X and I began rubbing our penises together and at one point it, it we ended up moving into the living room and we were standing in front of a tv uh that was playing something i don't remember what it was but it was on and it was playing something and i remember that i for whatever reason the gl i can remember the glow of the tv um being transferred onto our bodies because that i that 
helped me to see. I could, I'd look down and that helped me to see my penis and X's penis rubbing together. And then I looked up. I looked up and I looked up, up and to my left. And his father was seated on the couch. He was on the couch. And he was looking down at us. See, all right. So I guess we must have started in the bathroom or something. I don't even remember. I, I, I don't. But we moved from there into the living room. And I, I, what I remember is that I didn't care that his father was in the living room. Because I thought he was asleep. Because the way he was slumped on, on the couch, he, it looked like he was asleep. And it was, even though it was during the day, it was also dark. So I didn't, I did, and I remember his shirt was off. He, he might have even been, his shirt was off. He might have been in pajama pants and slacks or maybe even in, in, in his underwear. I don't remember. But I remember that he was uh, sitting there. He was there. And, and they're white, by the way. And I, th- that actually matters. I don't even know why, why I neglected to, to mention that. But Amber and her brother, uh, they were white. And his father, I thought he was asleep. Um, so I, I didn't really care that he was there. But while... So I, I disregarded him. But as X and I, as we continued to rub our penises together, something told me to look up and to my left. And I did. And when I did, I saw that he was looking down at us. He was awake. And he was looking down at us. And then... What happened next, oh man, I heard my sister, I heard my name, my my name, she called my name, but it was muffled, it was dampened because she was, she screamed it, she yelled it uh, from behind the, the glass, right, the, the window, so it was, it was dampened, but she s- screamed my name. And, and the, 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 the shock, I, I could, I could hear the shock, the disbelief, the disgust. I could hear it in her voice before I even saw it on her face. And I, I turned to my right and I saw my sister through the, through the window and Amber. If that's her name, I'm just going to say Amber. I don't remember. I don't remember. I started with an A. And they were looking at us. And my sister, my sister was sure, for whatever reason, I remember Amber being much taller than all of us. Because my sister, she was so much shorter than than her. Um. I don't even know why that matters so much, but, uh, and so I, I, I I have bisexual tendencies and I, it's funny because I, I don't even know why I should say that because I, I love being with men, but I hate it. But, but it's not even that I love being with men sexually, because I never have been. The idea of a man penetrating me makes me furious. It, it, it doesn't, um, but, but I, but I'm also able to entertain the idea. I, I, I find the idea of being taken 
by a man at once arousing and disgusting. And I've never let it, I've never let it happen. I've never uh, gotten to the, gotten to the point where I've actually um, given myself to a man. I have had sex with men before, meaning I have penetrated men before. Um, I've penetrated men before and I've, I've, um, I've given blowjobs before. I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, but, but when I did it, there was still a level of, of control behind it. I was in control. I, I, they were the one I was dominating them. If that makes sense. When I was giving the blow job, it's very similar to, um, um, going down on a woman, right? Um, in, in my opinion, and maybe I shouldn't even use the word my opinion because it, it is what it is. Going down on a woman is just another way to, to dominate her. What you're doing is you're, you're asserting, you're asserting your ability to control her, to manipulate her body, to get her to submit to you. Um, that's what's happening. Um, and I've, that mindset, I had that same mindset when I was giving, uh, blowjobs, uh, to another man. I had it, the, the situation. I never, I wasn't the one that was being used. I was the one that was controlling somebody else. Um, I, I was controlling somebody that was submitting to me, meaning that I, I was the dominant one. Um, so, I, what, what I was, expl I was just, and the, the trip, um, I was confronted with, with this aspect of my sexuality and it's not something that I've ever really been afraid of. It, 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 well, no, that's a lie because I, I have been afraid of it, but also, no, that is a lie. I, I have been afraid of it. Because I was always worried. No, because just about everything that I've done in my life, I have had to worry about how that pleasure would alter men's perception of me. How it would alter their perception of me. Because usually what happens when you find out, well, at least when I was growing up, and things are different now. But when you, when you learn that a man was when you learn that a man was sexually attracted to other men, uh, it automatically made him weaker to a degree. Um, how do I describe it? It's, he's, and even if he's not seen as weak, he's still, even if he's, even if, let's say, how do I say it? Even if he's not seen as weaker, he st when I was growing up, he was still, you weren't accepted. It was like, it, it was just, it's just disgusting, right? Um, and everything that I've done in my life pretty much made me hide that, uh, well, no, I can't even say that because I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up being attracted to men. That only started happening when I was like, when I was in my late 20s, late 20s, it had to be late 20s, early, I'm, I'm 30, I'm early 30s now. And I started playing around with my sexuality. Uh, no, cause it happened when I was a teenager, but I, I, I suppressed it so i i there were periods when i was a teenager uh i fingered myself and um you know i went through a period where i was i would like suck on um i would suck on like uh what do you call them um what do you call them uh permanent permanent marker right permanent marker a sharpie is that that yeah permanent marker i would i would go through periods i would like 
that would um that would become a part of my uh, masturbation ritual sometimes but but you know i would suck on a sharpie and pretend that i to be sucking on a penis or i would finger myself or you know insert a sharpie um into myself and but i never orgasmed from that kind of play and that kind of play eventually it just it fizzled out it i di- it didn't i i because i i I never orgasm from it. I I didn't, that was, that has never been as delicious to me as being with women, being, being with a woman, like nothing compares, nothing compares being with a man is, well, obviously I didn't know at the time, but now growing up as a man and having experienced both, I can still say that, um, well, Mm, no, they're just different. They're just different. One isn't really better than the other. As someone who has sampled both, one isn't... Because the thing is, it's not that... See, this this is the thing. And it's funny because the, the, what what I experienced like an hour ago is allowing me to open up and be this candid about it. Because before, even to myself, I, I wasn't... Th- the memory... It's like it was hidden away behind walls that I couldn't access, that were not... that I couldn't break through. Um. And I just, I I thought about it. I think that maybe that was it. My sexuality. I was just asking myself, because the thing is, I don't, I've never given myself to a man. But I fantasize about it. And I hate it, but I like it. And obviously I've had had sex with men before. I've I've dominated men before. But that aspect of my sexuality, I ask myself, why does that even exist? Why? And it's because of that memory. It's because of the memory. I didn't even read... I didn't even realize I had forgotten that that even happened to me. That's the point, I guess, why I'm even recording myself. Am I still recording myself? Is this still going on? Yeah, it is. Wow. I just, I didn't even, I forgot that it happened to me. And that is why I, I I don't I don't consider myself gay. I don't. Um I I'm I'm a bisexual. I'm a bisexual. I I I But the thing is, my bisexuality isn't, it's not, is it, I wonder, it can't be organic. Because the thing is, I wasn't molested, but I was definitely not by definition, not by definition. The only way that I would have been molested is X's father. He would have had to enter into the... He would have, he would have had to directly touch us because the thing is what what I X and I were the same age or at least we were in the same age range right so what was happening between us was natural or at least it felt natural and there was an innocence to it 
but the innocence of what was happening was tainted by the presence of an adult. It was tainted by the presence of a, of a pervert, of a man who was getting pleasure out of watching two little boys play with each other. Uh, so I... So I I wonder if it can't be organic. <sighs> and maybe it's because my my the roots now that I've I've learned the true roots of my bisexuality, the roots of darkness. Now now make no mistake. Make no mistake, make no mistake. I do not uh harbor hatred towards um Ex's father? I don't. Why? Because it would be a waste of my time. What's done is done. What's happened has happened. That memory, the what happened, what transpired, is always going to be a part of me. That's that's something that right there is. I think that right there is probably the worst part. Is the thing that would that really makes it feel like it's a scar on your on my psyche? Like I am somehow now impure because someone else decided to be impure. That is, so I can understand in that way the um. Now I, I I have a better idea of how someone else who could have even been hurt to a greater degree than I physically I I I understand I understand in my own way obviously um so i i i love i love being with men i do i love it i love i love kissing men i love i love just i love penises i love i love it I love the, the 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 muscles of a man, the 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 strength and the. But I, I can also appreciate vulnerability, and suppleness, suppleness that would resemble a woman. I. And I, I, in, in a way, I love it just as much as I do being with a woman. In its own way. In its own way, I love it just as much. God. But I, but I also hate it. In a way. And that's evident in, in the idea of actually giving myself to a man uh, still disgusts me. I'm okay with having sex with men me, if I'm in a position where I'm the one in control. What I'm the one penetrating them. Where I'm the one dominating them but the idea of it happening to me sickens me (laughs) 
And I don't think that I would. And yet, even though that's the case, I can still fantasize about giving myself up. If that makes sense, the, the, the act of submission is still so sublime in its own way. The act of letting someone else do whatever they want to you. The, I, the fantasy of it is sublime. And yet it's sickening. And, and yet... Fuck. Uh, I have to accept that the impurity, that the darkness that comes from that memory, I have to accept that that will never go away. It will never go away. The darkness that comes from that memory <clears throat> that's going to be a part of me forever. I can't change that. I can't go back in time. I can't become a different person. I can't forget it. What's happened to me in the past will always be a part of me. I cannot distance myself from it. I have to accept. And, and not only can I not distance myself from it, I have to accept that it has influenced me. It has made an effect on me. It has had an effect on me. But I can't allow myself to be angry. Even still, even though it makes me feel disgusting. And yet, filled with ecstasy at the same time. It's so... Oh, God. Despite how it makes me feel, I know what's best for me is to not be angry. I have to let it go. I have to let my anger go, and I also have to let go of my self-loathing. I have to let go of my self-loathing. I have to let go of my self-disgust. I have to let go. In the long run, it does me no good to hold on to anything that's going to turn me into a miserable man. It does me no good. There are parts of me, I don't even know. I wonder if that had never happened to me. Because I was still exploring my 
the homosexual part of my sex, my sensuality, my, my sexuality. I was exploring that with X. I, was I exploring it? Was, was that organic? I, I can't help but wonder if, see, the messed up thing about that whole thing is that the, the fact that his father, that the adult was there, it messes up the entire dynamic. Because I can't even want it to be organic. Because what if he told X to invite me over? What if he, a, a, what if he implanted the suggestion into his own son's head to do that with me? I, I, I can't even, it's possible that, I just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Because could it have been because if he wasn't there, if he would have never been there, I still would have explored that part. Well, no. Because because if the father had put the idea into the son, then the son would have been behaving at the behest of the father. He would have been doing his father's will, not his own will. He would have been an extension of his father's perversion, an unwilling, an unknowing extension of his own father's perversion through no fault of his own. Because we were, all, we were just, we were little, we were boys. <laughs> we were only boys. <sighs> I just, it makes me question everything about my sexuality. I mean, at this point, as a, as a man, I have to accept that I'm attracted to other men. It's, it is what it is. I'm also attracted to women. Make no mistake. I mean, I've had plenty of sex with women. Or at least I've had my fair share of sex with women. Um, uh, but I even still, even through all this, I, I don't, I don't, <sighs> it's so strange. I, cause see before I used to, I used to think that I could only, before I used to only be able to see myself growing old with a woman, you know? I used to only see myself forming intense, romantic, emotional relations, uh, uh, attachments with a woman, but I, I I know I'm capable of doing the same with a man, but even still, it's not the same because I'm still attracted to women more. I'm still attracted to women more <sighs> because there's still a disgust. E even though I'm, I'm attracted to men, there's still a level of disgust there. It's not, my attraction to women is still perverse. It's still predatory in its own right. Um... I'm a man, I mean, what can I say? But it's still, it's, it's not, it's not blemished. It's unblemished, my attraction to women. My attraction to men is blemished. That's what it is. Yeah, it's tainted by what happened when I was a boy. So even though I enjoy it, even though I am open to it, and I obviously at this point, Maybe even courtesy of the, maybe even because the mushrooms, 
helped me be open to talk about it. I'm open to it. I'm not, I'm not entirely disgusted by it, but it's still not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. And of course I still, I, I fetishize, um, uh, getting women pregnant, right? Like, you know, breeding women and things like that. It's still, that's still arousing to me. Impregnating a woman, you know, the act of owning her with my seed is still very attractive. It's, it's still very arousing. It's, it's sexy, but uh, I can do the same in a way with a man emptying my seed inside of a man is, is also sexually fulfilling, but in a, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Um. Anyway, I don't. I just. It's uh, the sun shining through uh, my window. And uh. Yeah. It was dark before, and I guess maybe that had its own spell on me. It had its own effect on my on my mind, the darkness, the seductiveness of shadows. Um, but now it's kind of getting the sunlight's creeping through the uh, the blinds, and I don't know. It, what I will say is, it's almost liberating having <laughs> talking about it and having the trip taking the mushrooms and getting them to open myself <sighs> i can the the trip it the trip it's it was liberating intense Definitely punishing, um, uncomfortable, definitely uncomfortable. Um, like I said, I was about an hour ago, I was in the fetal position. I was just sobbing, just bawling my eyes out, just <sighs> just being assaulted with all these emotions and <sighs> the power of that, me of that memory. And not only that, but just wrestling with the fact that that memory is a part of me, that it will never go away. And having to also understand that being angry won't do me any good. Anger won't do me any good. Anger is not, it doesn't lead to peace. Anger does not lead to peace. Anyway. <sighs>